I'm Lynn, and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Nobody lambed overnight, but I'm sure something happened in here today. So let's see what's going on. This is the rejected lamb, and she got into the feeder and got in the wrong pen and was screaming. So we just opened the door, and as you can see, Mommy's standing there for her. Lamb didn't really need to nurse, but wanted comfort. Mom wasn't screaming back, but the lamb came running back in and she's letting it nurse. It's gonna stay, they're gonna stay here for a while. But that's one good thing. We couldn't figure out was who was screaming and then we noticed there was no lamb in this pen and she'd gotten through the feeder into the other pen. Legolas. Oh, who's that one eating creep feet over there? Creep. I think he's eating milk off of the mother, eh? Yeah, but now I just gotta see. There's a few new ones in here. I gotta go get some. I brought extra bottles. So this will get better in a couple days when they when they get more trained. when I made that bottle holder we actually laughed at it because we thought it was kind of like a factory holder but yeah mm -hmm. that that many sheep you get a few problem sheep hey mom are all the now? yeah those are all done I can go and check I'll do my shift here's the little guy with the chin he looks the like from at first glance looks like a pure white lamb. And 
just a shadow underneath its chin, but actually that's... <laughs> oh, there you go, see your mom. You're a very pretty mom. Hey, we're in the noisy barn. This means they haven't been fed yet. You guys. How do you sleep through this? Oh, the quiet should come in a second. This group's looking good. This is the young Suffolk group. Everybody looks in good condition. Now the lamb races stop. Hey guys, I thought there were lamb races. Hi, yeah, I thought you were doing lamb races over here. It looks like a kind of a lamb trot. Arnie just put a little bit of hay into their creep area for the first time and I see that they've all gone for that. Checking it out. They much prefer to eat in private like that. They're all eating the hay. Well, that's it, isn't it? Huh? That's it, isn't it? So this pen has the oldest of the lambs. <laughs> that one's acting tough around Katie. Oh, and you're a pretty girl too. You are. So as they're getting older, this pen is starting to develop their personalities now, as you can see by this girl. She's one of the dirty faced ones. But the uh, pens back here with the humidity and stuff, and you know, there's dirt everywhere. It, it gets in the wool, it gets damp, and then it looks like muddy stuff if they have a woolly face. That's not a lamb like Stinky because you can see the neck is is nice and clean so you know that she's not a stealer. Hi you guys it's these woolly faced ones. Arnie just, they're also at the age where they're now starting 
to want to eat more food on their own. Not just mom's milk, it's not enough anymore. So we've got the hay in here and I can see that they're really liking that. We've got little bits of creep feed in there as well. And these guys are now starting to get well on their way. The Suffolk pen on the other side is the next oldest group. But these, these guys all lambed a little bit faster than the Suffolks. And then right now the Suffolks are kind of catching up. Hi you guys, you like that? Do you like the creep feed? Hi. There's some pretty nice ones in here. I'm liking the look of these lambs. I'm seeing good legs on them. Good growth too. Now, is that fun in there? So you can see some of them are standing on a little platform <laughs> so that they can reach into the trough. That's why you see some of our older sheep that are eating at the trough like that. You'll see the wool worn off their necks. Um, sometimes they'll even have bear patches on their necks and it's not because they're losing their wool or have lice or anything like that but when the mums are in the trough like that they're, it's metal and their heads are way in so it actually rubs the wool off Number four ram is a, a really, really well set boy. And look at the leggings on him. We like those woolly leggings on our dorsets. But he's a wide boy, this one. Hi, who are you? Um, this is my number seven, you lamb. Hi, you're lucky seven. She's gorgeous. You are. And why is she gorgeous? Because she's got woolly ears. She has wool on her cheeks, but not all over her face. She has a straight back. She has a square pink nose. Her legs are nice and straight. She's up on her pasterns. She's got woolly legs, which is also a dorset trait. She's got a long, deep body. She's a very, very nice ewe lamb. Hi, and you're the very, very nice ram lamb. You are, you're, you're just a little woollier on the face than the ewe lamb. Oh, and speak of the devil, there's Kinky up on top of the box. Hi, Kinky. That doesn't look attractive, but it sure doesn't slow her down any. She uh, cannot be sold as breeding stock, though. Um, she would go to a pet home. So we'll find one of those for her. It's it does it's not probably not a genetic thing. So it shouldn't affect future lambs, but you don't know what caused it. Could be anything. Okay, we're in the noisy barn. This means they haven't been fed yet. You guys.
How do you sleep through this? Ah, the quiet should come in a second. Looking good. This is the young Suffolk group. Everybody looks in good condition. I thought while we were in with the lambs, I'd show you this guy. Hey, buddy, how you doing with those ears? This is Lazarus. Hey, how you doing? There's lamb races in the other pen. We're going to have to go check them out. Oh, I made a mistake. That's not Lazarus. Oh, that looks just like him. Now the lamb races stop. Hi guys. I thought there were lamb races. Hi, yeah, I thought you were doing lamb races over here. Looks like a kind of a lamb trot. And you just put a little bit of hay into their creep area for the first time. And I see that they've all gone for that. Checking it out. They much prefer to eat in private like that. They're all eating the hay. Well, that's it, isn't it? Huh? That's it, isn't it? So this pen has the oldest of the lambs. <laughs> that one's acting tough around Katie. Oh, and you're a pretty girl too. You are. So as they're getting older, this pen is starting to develop their personalities now, as you can see by this girl. She's one of the dirty faced ones. But the uh, pens back here with the humidity and stuff, and you know, there's dirt everywhere. It, it gets in the wool, it gets damp, and then it looks like muddy stuff if they have a woolly face that's not a lamb like stinky because you can see the neck is is nice and clean so you know that she's not a stealer hi you guys it's these woolly faced ones Barney just, they're also at the age where they're now starting to want to eat more food on their own. 
not just mom's milk. It's not enough anymore. So we've got the hay in here and I can see that they're really liking that. We've got little bits of creep feed in there as well. And these guys are now starting to get well on their way. The Suffolk pen on the other side is the next oldest group. But these, these guys all lambed a little bit faster than the Suffolks. And then right now the Suffolks are kind of catching up. Hi you guys, you like that? Do you like the creep feed? Hi. There's some pretty nice ones in here. I'm liking the look of these lambs. I'm seeing good legs on them. Good growth too. Hi. Hi, you're really curious now. Is that fun in there? Oh, you can see some of them are standing on a little platform <laughs> so that they can reach into the trough. That's why you see some of our older sheep that are eating at the trough like that. You'll see the wool worn off their necks. Um, sometimes they'll even have bear patches on their necks. And it's not because they're losing their wool or have lice or anything like that. But when the mums are in the trough like that, they're, it's metal and their heads are way in. So it actually rubs the wool off. This number four ram is a, a really, really well set boy. And look at the leggings on him. We like those woolly leggings on our dorsets. But he's a wide boy, this one. Hi, who are you? Oh, and this is my number seven, you lamb. Hi, you're lucky seven. She's gorgeous. You are. And why is she gorgeous? Because she's got woolly ears. She has wool on her cheeks, but not all over her face. She has a straight back. She has a square pink nose. Her legs are nice and straight. She's up on her pasterns. She's got woolly legs, which is also a dorset trait. She's got a long, deep body. She's a very, very nice ewe lamb. Hi, and you're the very, very nice ram lamb. You are. You're, you're just a little woollier on the face than the ewe lamb. Oh, and speak of the devil, there's Kinky up on top of the box. Hi, Kinky. That doesn't look attractive, but it sure doesn't slow her down any. She uh, cannot be sold as breeding stock though. Um, she would go to a pet home. So we'll find one of those for her. It's, it does, it's not, probably not a genetic thing. So it shouldn't affect future lambs. But you don't know what caused it could be anything. It's getting quite dampy and cold in these barns, so we thought put some new bedding out again for these little lambs. See, when you put it out, the first thing they do is like roll in it. <laughs> Hi guys. Someone, someone asked me a question about to compare Suffix and Ritos and why you wouldn't why you wouldn't want more Ritos 
as a mother breed and use the suffix for the terminal. He said, don't get me going on that because <laughs> it's kind of a, Ritos are a breed that we're not as fond of and it's not because we haven't had them. We used to have 60 and we've kind of bled them out. We, um, we've got, got Dorsets instead and bred them to our Ritos and to the point where there's some Ritos left. You can always tell the Rito ones because they're the ones with the really fine bones. And uh, the only plus that we can see with a Rito is that they do have multiple lambs and they're quite vigorous. As far as being better mothers in Suffolk, I don't see it. Suffolk are equally as good mothers. And um, as for you saw the morning video with us feeding bottles, that's the number one reason I don't want Ritos is I don't want to have uh, triplets, quads, quints. I see no purpose in that whatsoever. It's not, um, what we always say is it's not how many lambs you bring to market, it's how many pounds of lamb you bring to market. And probably two good size uh, suffix are going to weigh in as much as your five quints in the same amount of time. So um, we don't like the bottle babies. We're, we're not equipped. If you're going to have Ritos, you really need to have a milk machine. Because if you look at the sheep breeds that are around, Suffolk are probably one of the oldest breeds still going today and still going just as strong today and there's a reason for that because although that they are a terminal breed they are also an extremely good mother breed they have an average of 1.8 to 2.0 lambs their downfall is that they don't you can't do accelerated breeding with them unless you're using cedars and stuff and most, uh, most Rito people use cedars too. The reason we, we bled out the Ritos is with the Dorsets is because at the end of the day, it's a meat market. And we thought, what what's the point in having a maternal breed and having to breed a terminal ram on and you're still not getting the meaty lamb that you would get if you just had a good all-purpose terminal breed like a Suffolk. A Suffolk's a great maternal breed and it's a great terminal breed. It's a fast grower. Like we get our, we can get Suffolk's to 100 pounds in 100 days and it can take twice as long for Ritos to, to reach that point. Not to mention the extra labor, the higher mortality rates, the high cost of a milk machine, the high cost of milk replacer, just the whole thing. Uh, twins are what we want to have. And if you want to have out of season breeding, Dorset's out of season breed and they have a little bit more meat on them. That's why people cross them. But most people don't want to cross a Suffolk or a Dorset. The only reason they're crossing Dorset's is on the Ritos. Um, because the Ritos need extra. So a breed that you feel you have to cross is a breed that's missing something in our mind. A breed that's already got it all doesn't need crossing. So, um, and Rito sheep, for those of you who don't know Rito sheep, they're a breed of sheep that was developed in Ottawa, Canada. And as far as I know, they're not in any other country in the world. Um, they were bred for multiple lambs and to breed out of season. So you could get um, three, supposedly three lamb crops in two years instead of just two lamb crops. You want triplets? I really, really don't understand why anyone wants triplets or quints or quads. Uh, I totally don't get it. Um, Milk machine is thousands of dollars. Milk replacer is $100 a bag. A lamb is going to go through a bag of milk replacer per lamb. 
Uh, so you're losing a lot of money on those bottle babies. You may as well have two perfect lambs. And there are plenty of breeds that will breed out of season that will give you that. And uh, you don't have to go through the bottle baby thing. But it is a personal preference. It's just one we don't, we don't like frail, like, uh, frail type lambs. <laughs> and all our, well, we, we've really bled out the Ritos in our flock. I'm looking here. So you can see all the ones that are smaller, finer boned will have Rito influence in them. All the stockier, meatier, hunky lambs that all say that's a bruiser or that's a keeper or that's a humdinger will not be a Rito. <laughs> um, but it's not meant to be a criticism of the Rito people. That's why I told the person I really didn't want to get into Ritos because it is our least favorite breed, but it's just our opinion. A lot of people hate Suffolk, and I can see why they do because... Suffolk lambs, if you're going to criticize a Suffolk, a lot of Suffolk lambs are slow to get started. But after day two, uh, I don't think any breed, I still don't think any breed beats a Suffolk. The fault with Dorsets is that they have too little lambs, like not little in size, but too few. So that's why the if you're going to have a Rito in your flock... I would say the F1, F2, F3 Dorset Rito is really nice. But if I was going to have a Dorset cross, no. I would much prefer a Dorset Texel cross. Have less lambs, but way better quality lambs. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, it's about the meat. It's not about the numbers. And it's certainly not about labor. If you're lazy like us, you don't want Ritos. They're way more work. <laughs> So please don't hate me, Rito breeders. Somebody asked me, uh, they they thought that breeders were, should all have Rito sheep and have a terminal sire. And most countries uh, don't have Rito sheep because no countries have them, except for Canada. However, I do know uh, several Rito breeders who have awesome Ritos. That I have to say. This girl here has got Rito in her. This mom. And the reason she's here is because she's a better Rito. And she probably is a cross, too. I don't think we have any pure Ritos left. We really, really did not like the multiple little lambs. They are, you know, tiny. You get a whole bunch of them, five of them. Takes you six months just to get them to market weight. Or if you want to sell them at 60 pounds, like a lot of Rito breeders will do, um, that's fine. But then you you can't... A mom that's got milk, well, unless the, unless the lamb's, you know, six months old at 60 pounds. I don't know. I just don't, do not see the point of Ritos. This is a Dorset crop. Uh, a Doris. Is this number seven? I'm going to look at her back because Arnie doesn't know. It is. She's my favorite. Watch her back leg, though. <laughs> now, Arnie has a hard time holding a Dorset. Careful of her back leg. This is why you want Dorsets. <laughs> because Dorset lands get up and soak. They're highly vigorous. They are. you got to give them credit for that. Ritos are vigorous, too. But I, I love Ritos. But what, what's, the, what's the Suffolk lamb? A pound a day? Yeah. What's a Dorset? Maybe three quarter. I would, I would guess, I would guess a, do, a Dorset against a pound a day is probably rare. Yeah, more a three quarter probably. And don't quote me on this, but I'm going to guess that Ritos don't gain... Half a pound probably. Well, I well, hate to say that. I don't know. Well, I, don't I, I think... I think Yeah, we had 60 Ritos. Uh, okay. If you had Ritos and they were twins, they would probably gain half a pound a day. But if you had Ritos with quads, quints, probably okay. a quarter pound a day. Okay, but just to be fair, the, the different breeds, okay. So we just established that. A pound for the Suffolk. Maybe three quarters for these, maybe. Two thirds, a quarter, three quarters. Yeah. And the Ritos less. Yeah. So the breeds are all different. There's a purpose for them all. 
but the breeds are different. It's, and, uh, and don't quote me, I thought most people told me that Rito's were hard keepers. They need a lot of feed. Yeah, because they're feeding a lot of lambs. Yeah. And, la and Dorsets actually can be an overfed. If you feed Dorsets too uh, hard, they can actually get yeah, upset. Yeah, Dorsets are extremely easy keepers. And you can't get enough feed in Dorset Suffolk. Yeah. But as a pound a day body weight, they've got to be living on something. Yeah, they're like Rito's. Yeah. Rito's and Suffolk's are harder keepers. That's the one I want. And about. Dorsets are, well, he's a boy. That's cool. But she, she's, I love that number seven. So basically, I really, really, really hate comparing breeds and what I like and don't like because someone's going to get their back up and it is a totally personal choice. Like some people would be very disappointed in having a big ewe like that with a single lamb. I, on the other hand, I'm, ec I'm ecstatic when we have a beautiful lamb like that. This is a first time mom, and that's what I call a humdinger ewe lamb. Next year, this mom will more than likely have twins. She could have triplets. And the odd ones that have singles into adulthood are often the ewes that I use to foster or adopt lambs, so they've always got a purpose so that I have as few bottle babies as possible. That's what makes us happy. Seeing lots of little, little ones and pulling them off and putting them on machines and holding a group of quints in your hand is what other people like. They, they, they love those little lambs. Um, to each his own. Dogs, they like the dungeon thing, eh? The little dungeons. Yeah, they do seem, sheep do seem to like the little caves. They're all, if they have the option to go in a cave, they do. But they also like these little boxes that we built on the side of the wall. That's a cluster of the Suffolk lambs in there. So Arnie's getting sheep feed ready for tonight. And Buddy's sitting on his skid steer waiting for the ride around the yard because he has to go everywhere with us. I guess I'm going to head to the house and make dinner as usual and I am going to thank you for watching and hopefully you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.